Jupiter's Legacy Volume 5. Now, I have gone through and looked at Jupiter's Legacy all the way through its entire run here, and uh, Volume 5 is it, and it stops, and it's got a cliffhanger on it, and there was a promised Volume 6 to resolve everything, and that did not come to fruition. I don't know what's stopping that at this point, but I know it has been on, put on hold, and uh, there's not a release date for Volume 6 or anything coming out of Volume 6 as of yet. Now, these are actually the grandchildren of the original Jupiter's Legacy people. So we get the first storyline of uh, these superheroes from like a Golden Age type of time. The second one is then uh, the superheroes kind of in modern times being like, hey, we're going to take over the world and make everything better. And then they, you know, the villains get together and say, you know what, you've abused your power and they, they take them down. Now we've got a third like generation and uh the art's really different in this in a way that like is it's really detailed and some of the arts like colors are really saturated and bright and different but it's also a little hard to follow at points because they're getting a little too uh i'd say colorful with it and um so in this one uh the uh the the lady liberty the the kind of uh female lead here ends up going off into a planet uh and she ends up meeting with this alien race who says they want her help and they're they're actually making a thing to gather all the superheroes together in order to take them all down much like the original Jupiter's legacy kind of premise but the villains and the heroes were doing that and these aliens are coming to Earth, and they want it to actually take over Earth at this point. Now, they think this might tie into their origin because, like, this the this island had these alien-type people who showed up and gave them their powers to begin with. Um, and that's still a mystery that's not all the way resolved through the course of this. I guess it probably gets resolved in that next volume. Uh, and so this one, like, it's just kind of superheroes farting around for a while while they figure out the alien threat, and they figure it out too late, of course, and they start getting offed. And there's a lot of gore and violence, and like uh, there's like a um, girl who can shrink down to size and whatnot, uh, like Ant-Man or whatever. She actually just like, he, like she gets mind-controlled, so she shrinks down to size, but like a penny is she's holding in her hand doesn't shrink down to size, and it just crushes her uh, as she does. Uh, and, uh, you know, just a lot of like Mark Miller dark gore <laughs> that you see... That's uh, that's very uh, happens all the time. You see the weird kind of pastel colors that are used in this that just like it just makes it a little hard to read and hard to focus on things uh, over the course of this as well. So this is my least favorite volume. It ends on a cliffhanger to where it's not resolved yet. Like I said, and these grandchildren, uh, one of them's taking on the utopian uh, mantra, which is you know been passed down. One of Lady Liberty still around, and you know her kids are still around, and uh, and that's kind of what we are getting to with this. Uh, so it needs a conclusion. We'll see how it ends up with the conclusion. Maybe it picks up a little better. The alien plotline's kind of interesting, uh, but you know it's not not that unique of a thing having an alien invasion. Uh, it's just really dark and really uh, <laughs> gory at a lot of parts, which is not my favorite kind of stuff. But it is kind of Mark Miller's hallmark, so you do expect that going in. So I call this a six point five out of ten, which is a little below my average. Not not my favorite read of the year so far. Uh, but it is a uh, okay continuation of Jupiter's legacy. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.